Hey, we're live. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Yeah. It said it said to go live. We'll wait and get. Uh, I told everybody noon, so we'll get we'll get going here in a minute. Me. We'll see. Check, check, check. One, two, three. What's up, buddy? Hey, hey, hey. All right, let's get going. What's going on, everybody? Um, we're, we're, this is a different deal today because we're uh, – I had a doctor's appointment this morning, like I was telling you guys. And so I didn't – it was an early doctor's appointment down at the VA. Wow, look at everybody jumping on. Um, and so I just got home, and Courtney and I just had lunch. And, and on the way home, I'm like, man, what a great time to talk. It's Friday, you know? Uh Everybody's got lunch time somewhere around now, so we'll go for an hour if everybody's cool and, and wants to talk. Um, I'm driving home, and, and and I thought to myself, Courtney and I were on the phone as I was coming home, and we got talking about weather, you know, and, and they originally had called today for mid-40s with, um, with rain. It's 30 degrees outside right now in Brewerton, and it's snowing, and it's doing that all the way down into the city of Syracuse. So, um, you know, and then we started talking about, so I want to talk about weather today. Let's talk about weather. I'm going to, let's, we'll do things a little different. This is fun. It's different. The topic of today's <clears throat> event of show is weather and how it affects us. Is outdoors men and women, you know, uh, fishermen, hunters, doesn't matter. Whatever you, whatever you do, um, whatever you do. Listen, I, I was a guide when I was in my early twenties, and and it taught me very early on. I had to really learn weather and how it affected things that I was going to do, you know. Or once I started to work on charter boats out in Lake Ontario there are times you can't go and you've got to know if you're going to get stuck in that and all that stuff. And, and I was fortunate to, to, to work along a lot of great captains and stuff, but I learned weather and I learned what it meant for what I had to do the following day. Um, and, and I remember weather patterns because they stuck in my head and there were certain seasons that went along with things. And, and within that season, you needed this from the weather, you know, or ideally was this and, and whether you got it or not, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So um, let's talk about that because, because I have, I have tons of examples, global warming. Okay. Weather, global warming. I'll bet you we can prove its existence, whether it's cyclical short-term or long-term can be argued, but the fact that things have changed for the warmer as we sit here in in today is January thirteenth, um, yeah right January thirteenth, twenty twenty three, and none of the ground around here is covered in snow. We haven't had any significant snowfall in since Christmas, um, and and even that was kind of an anomaly. It just it was nice, and then all of a sudden it went boom right down off the cliff and stayed there for a week before it came back up, and now it's. Now it's November weather in January. Um, so let, let's let's get into that. Um, and let's and let's see who let's see who's here real quick. Um, man, there's a ton of people jumped in. Does it tell me how many people are watching? 18. That seems like a lot. Um, any questions yet? John Burroughs, I was wondering where the hell you were. <laughs> Sorry. I, I again I was at I was at my doctor's appointment at the VA. And for those of you in the Syracuse area that are veterans, 
uh, like me, then you really owe it to yourself for years and years. This is a tiny side note. For years and years, the VA and, and the and the Syracuse VA was where you were was where the old veterans went to die, you know. And um, and I remember that old hospital up there. I remember seeing my great grandfather up there. Um, and you were like, man, it's a scary place, and it was dark, and and there was nothing healing that felt about it. And and it always seemed like nobody gave a crap. I'm going to tell you, the, the Syracuse VA now, that is not the case. It is filled with people that can't help you enough. Um, you know, my doctor at some point will call me back today himself and review my x-rays because that's what he does with every patient. You know, in, in, in the amount of resources they have there for, for veterans, the um, that, that most of us do not take advantage of. We did our time and we said, I, we said, I, you know, I take the oath. I do solemnly swear. Um, some of this is, is, is what you deserve back. And, and if there's one thing I am as a proud veteran, and if there's another thing I am, if I can walk, I can carry my brother who can't, you know, and, and, and that was what they told us. You don't leave anybody and uh, you take care of your own. And, and, and as a veteran, as things go and get better and, and for walleye fest coming up, I, I'm working on some some special twists for our veteran friends, both active up north at Fort Drum. And you know, people forget Fort Drum is an hour north of Syracuse and is the largest military base in the Northeast um, and is filled with incredible soldiers that do things that that none of us ever know about, you know. You all right? <laughs> I'm home, obviously, and we're having lunch, and, you know, I just heard a noise that didn't sound right, so I said, all right? <laughs> and I heard back, yep. <laughs> uh, so if, if, if you're a vet in need, we'll end this quick. If you're a vet in need, please reach out to somebody at the VA. I guarantee you you'll have a good experience. Um, the people there are, are, are wonderful and, and they're there to help us. So, all right, let's talk, uh, let's talk about weather. Let's talk about weather, baby. Um, I know we're all jonesing to get on the ice. Um, I know we are, I am, but it's bigger than just not having any ice for ice fishing. You know, um, I, I set a goal for myself this year to, to fish in the boat, in the open lake um, after January 1st. And, and we did that. I shouldn't have been able to, you know, and I'm going to say in the old days. All right. So so I graduated high school in 1989. So my high school years were 85 to 89. And then and then from from 89 to 91. I lived here in, in 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 the area in Central Square, and then I left for that 91, 94 period when I was in the army. And so that to me is like the old days for me, you know. When I talk about the old days, and I remember, I don't really remember anything from the 70s or or really the early 80s. I was too young to to associate anything. But by the time high school age rolled around. I was hunting with my buddies, deer hunting and grouse hunting and duck hunting. And, and we would fish, you know, and take in those days when none of us had a boat. So we had a canoe. My my buddy Owen had an old canoe we used to take up into Lakeview. And, and uh, you know, but you 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 understood the dynamic of weather. Um, you know, we would always all a bunch of us guys go camping and stuff. And and so you had to at least understand it. And, and there were certain windows, you know, by – because usually by Halloween, and like even when my daughter was young in the in the late 90s, Halloween, more years than not, you were dressed, you know, the kids were all dressed with snowsuits and a costume over the top of that because it was cold, you know. And almost always by that week before Thanksgiving, which was deer season, it would be, there'd be snow on the ground almost always, and it'd be cold for opening day, you know. So I'm a kid, you know, I start hunting with my grandpa at 14, um, you know, down in the Southern tier. And, and I remember trudging through, you know, knee deep snow and it being, <laughs> it 
it being uh, cold, you know, and winter already. And then once it started, January thaws were a thing, but not like not like you would lose everything. It it, it might warm up into the 40s for a couple of days, and that was it. You know, you'd go ice fishing in a in a hoodie. Um, you know, but but by but but when that snow came and that early deer season, it was there until spring. And then, so now let's go through, you always had fishable ice by Christmas. Um, last ice was sometime in late March. And you never knew, you never knew, and raise your hand if you fished opening day of trout season, April 1st, in, in you know, in snow. Either standing in existing snow or it's snowing on you. Um, I can think of more times than not. It, it was the anomaly if it was a warm, beautiful day, you know, and you were wearing normal clothes. Normally you were freezing your ass off because it was really still winter. Um, it's April 1st, you know. Um, so it, things have changed. Things have changed. There's no way I don't think anybody can say that they haven't. Um, but let, let's go through. Let's let's talk. You know, does anybody have anything to say or questions or, you know, you know, I'll read your quick, I'll read your quick comment about weather and then we'll talk about it, you know. Um, oh man! Let me uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, we want to know the story on this on the shoulder. Um, you know they they messed with it. They shot it up. I got some drugs, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it today, tomorrow, and Sunday to to. Um, to rest and I'm going to hang out. I've got a, I got a bunch of paperwork to do. I have a ton of stuff with walleye fest to do. Um, and so this is, this is going to be a good weekend to, for me to just relax and catch up and, and uh, we'll still talk every day. We'll figure out something to do every morning, but um, yeah, they, they got me doing physical therapy. They're going to, they're going to send me for an ortho consult. We started talking about the VA. Um, they did x-rays. So it hurts. It hurts and I can't find a comfortable position. It doesn't matter what I do with it. So something I did in this time when I aggravated, like I say, I was, I was lifting Mike's boat off the, his drift boat off the trailer last Saturday morning up in Oswego. Um, Cause before then it had been pretty calm for a while. You know, I helped a buddy of mine this fall uh, pull his hoist out of the water, which is normal activity. You know, i and I popped it out then too. And, and so, you know, part of, part of it is, part of it is on a, on a metaphysical side, I just have to be more mindful. I'm not 25, even though, even though this tells me every day that I am, you know, a lot of this doesn't. And, 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 you know, I've lived life. I mean, I've been, a, I've, I've, you know, physically, have done a lot in my life as a lot of, a lot of my friends have, you know, and, and those of us on this, you know, we're all outdoorsmen. You, you do and go more than other people. Um, eventually the, the parts wear out, you know, not a big deal. I just got to be more mindful that I'm not 25 and I can't, you know, uh, so like that's about as far up as it's going to go. If, if I, if I wanted to get it from here to up here, I got to help it. So, which sucks because then they can't jig. And doing it left-handed, I'm telling you, is, is not the same. Jigging, I mean. Uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> she just got that. That was funny. Ah, uh, shit, that was funny. <laughs> How's the shoulder feel like a coffee grinder? You know the you know the guy in the in the circus that used to go like this and ding 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 ding, and then and the monkey would dance around. You know the coffee grinder or whatever. That's what it feels like. I listen to the weatherman too much. If I hit the weather, if I hit like the weatherman predicted the weather. If I hit like the weatherman predicted the weather. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hit a ball. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, if I hit like the weatherman predicted the weather, I'd be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. So, and so statistically, what do you think? You know, is it is it a third? That would be a 300 hitter. Is it? Are they right a third of the time? Because now I'm assuming 
that they've already changed the forecast. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that actually. So this morning, up until this morning, today's projected high was 43 in rain. Right there. Yeah, Syracuse 31. <clears throat> So now today it's 31 and 19. That's a 12 degree difference. So, so that brings me to what we were talking about with weather. It's a push and pull. You know, when you look at, at the jet stream, when you look at what, what fascinates me the most about weather is, is, yes, it's because of what it means, what I can do and where and when. But it, it's, it's a fascinating ebb and flow. And it's weather is just a constant tug of war between opposing forces, whether it be warm air or cold air, whether it be dry air or moist. Um, there was a third one I said, too. Dry or moist, warm or cold. Well, in density, too, I guess. Um, there, was a, there was another one. And, and it, it, everything is predicated on which one of those forces at that time is stronger and they ebb and flow. And so you get a, you get a cold front that comes in that, that, that switch and whatever's caused that, that airflow to come from a different direction is bringing it with, you know, and it's got, it's got more strength than numbers. Like if they were two opposing armies, this would be a much bigger army than this. And it comes in and just swallows it and it pushes that warm air back down. You get hurricane season and all those big disturbances around the equator and all that hot warm air has got to go someplace. And so all of a sudden it starts going north and now it's the big force and it pushes that cold air back because that heat warms it up faster than it can cool it down. And it's just a, and it's just a, an explosion. So we all knew that tomorrow there was going to be a big cold front. Well, it came here early, and it's been here all day, and it never got as warm, so they were wrong. Um, they predicted one thing, and it turns out they were wrong. You know, you're like, oh, 50-50 chance. But there are factors that they could have predicted, but there are also factors that they could have more, more quickly readjusted as they were watching it unfold. They can't dictate what it does, but is it if they were watching it closer – then they could be more accurately and quickly predicting what is really going to happen as opposed to what they think is going to happen, which is possibly right, possibly wrong. Um, and, and I would love like, like, I don't know if anybody out there knows Wayne Mahar, I want to figure out a way to talk to Wayne Mahar. Like I remember I've seen him at the fair and stuff, but like he would be a cool guy to have as a guest and talk about, you know, what the weather really is doing. And then what does those forces do? do to whatever the thing is that we're doing or chasing or or whatever how does that affect them you know i don't maybe he would know like he's like the weather guru in syracuse you know um has been since i was in high school like he's had a, a really great long career um and i think as a local guy i don't know that for sure i don't know why i'm talking about wayne mahar but i always thought wayne was cool um for a weather guy you know he's like a big dude big no idea who you're talking about. Yeah, that yeah, I know. <laughs> I, he's probably still on. I don't even know. Um, sorry. <laughs> Let's go back to questions. <clears throat> everybody, everybody. There's going to be weather, whether you like it or not. Yeah, no kidding. Wind blows. <laughs> this is this was the year that that. Oneida Lake earned its nickname Blow Nida. That's for sure. Ask, ask my buddy Anthony. Anthony. Ask Tony Delamore. Does the wind blow? Uh, I almost always had a blizzard for my birthday in the past. My bursary was yesterday, and I'm, well, 54. Uh, so, yeah, so a January birthday, you wouldn't expect this weather ever. John Burroughs, we don't want ice. We would slip and fall playing pickleball. Why do some fishermen say that it is good fishing while it rains? Um, I don't know. And, and, and it would all depend on, so, okay, so what's causing the rain? You know, there are gentle rains. There are driving thunderstorms. There are, there are up here, 
in 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 central New York and northern New York, we have you have lake effect rain. Certainly, um, when all your temperatures are in that you know forty ish range, uh, you have lake effect rain just like you would have lake effect snow, and it and is really concentrated, you know, and and possibly deluge like. So, and I don't pretend to know all of the different weather variables and exactly what they do to everything. I don't, you know, but you play your percentages on certain things. Um, when I was a kid, I always remember people saying, go fishing when it rains because the fish think someone's feeding them, throwing things on the surface. Oh, no shit. I've never, I've never heard anybody say that. Yeah. That's funny. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know I, if that's uh, true so or not. I but. thought you were going to say the old fisherman joke, you know, fish when it rains, the fish are wet anyway. It doesn't bother them. <laughs> and, and sometimes it doesn't. But sometimes it does, and that depends on what's causing the rain. So nothing is ever any one thing all the time, <clears throat> that's for sure. Um, uh, John says I, he was going to ask me if I want to get out. I do want to get out, and that doesn't mean I can't. Um but we'd need another person up front and we could run plugs and, you know, I can reel if I'm fighting with my left arm, I could reel, but I can't, I can't jig or I can't, I can't do anything crazy with my right arm. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's Friday, baby. It's, it's a Friday. What? Who can't be happy on a Friday? Uh, John Burroughs is on fire. So now he's saying that his wife is, wants to ask a question. He said, Linda wants to ask you a question. Do you have to comb and rebraid that beard every day? <laughs> no. Well, yes, but you don't. Do you do bathroom <laughs> remodelings? I have a job for you in Cleveland. How should I contact you? Schmitty, contact me. Uh, sure. Contact me on Facebook or Instagram, DM, um, and then we'll we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah, Linda wants to ask that. <laughs> no, she doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Pull up a chair for Courtney. No. She said no. <laughs> She's next to me. She said no. <laughs> Courtney just rolled out of bed. <laughs> Travis, this is a good one. I definitely need to learn to change gears and keep my boat in the water longer. Missed out on a lot of fishing. I winterize it before bow season. Don't like hunting in the 70s. Should be fishing. Uh, Linda's texting. <laughs> Linda, Linda Burles is texting my wife. Um Listen, you can only do so many things, you know. Um, in years past, I hunted deer and, and ducks and geese, ducks and geese professionally and, and deer all the time in between. And that was all the while guiding salmon and steelhead trips. So, you know, from, from early goose in September – all the way through, I did a lot of hunting, and and in those years, I didn't fish a night out here at all. I didn't I didn't get in on it. my fall fishing was was for hire, and it was in the Salmon River, you know. Um, and when I could get off the Salmon River, we went hunting. Um, my old buddy Mo Neal and I would would uh, you know we 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 were always going. I wouldn't have kept the boat in to do this. And I wouldn't have thought about it. Um, and, and I would have had time had I not been, been guiding. Um, so, but like now, you know, it's different for me, but, but the fall fishing out here and everywhere too, not, it's not just here, but this fall fishing and those smallmouth and walleye bites, when you get on them in the fall, there's an urgency to them that is different and it's God bless it. Addicting. Hey, you know, especially a guy that bow hunts, he's into it, you know, so so he looks forward to that. Now, our weather patterns have changed dramatically for you, no different than it is for ducks and geese, you know, uh, and I've said it multiple times, and I talked about all the ducks I see out there every day, because 
even though I'm not duck hunting right now, I still watch those birds every time I see them. If a, if a flock of ducks or geese fly by me, it always takes my attention because I'm always, I love watching them. Didn't see them this year. And, and I live on the river and it stays open most of the winter. And by now I would have a full array of divers from, I'll get canvasbacks in here, redheads, um, bluebills, ringnecks, old squaw, uh, you know, two different kinds of mergansers, uh, whistlers, bufflehead. I mean, the list goes on and that's just the divers I'll see. And then you'll have tons of puddle ducks off, you know, There'll be three, 400 mallards and blacks here. Um, you know, you'll see swans. I haven't seen them yet because that means that the weather up in up in the north from the subarctic all the way down to the Canadian border with the U.S., it's not as cold as it used to be. And so that's what forces the migration. All their shit freezes and locks up, and it, and, and they have no choice but to migrate south of that line. And when that line stays up in northern Ontario, they don't have to come all the way down here. And they can they can live year round up there. You know, we all know about the the, the resident geese populations that in the last 40 years have went through the roof. Why? Because they don't have to go much farther than this most years. And they can they can there's if you drive down the south shore of Oneida Lake right now, down past Lakeport, um, almost into lower South Bay. There's a flock of there was there's a creek that comes out right there, and it stayed open through this last freeze. If there's not five thousand geese sitting there and they're there every day that I drive by there, so you know those those geese if they don't live here, this is as far south as they've had to go, and they've been able to stay here. Um, so it changes, you know, weather changes shit. It's a great question. Do you think there will be safe ice this year? Yes, Forgotten Domain. Yes, I do. It, it, I, I don't, something will, the alarm bells will really start going off if we go all winter long with with mild temperatures. Eventually it will, eventually. So yes. <laughs> Somebody said maybe bait is falling from the trees. Yeah, because I said... <laughs> Yeah. Next. yeah. So so okay. Here's two answers to that. Barometric pressure and runoff causes bait to move. Yeah, and it gets everything moving around. Yeah, and a warm rain in the summertime or a warm rain in the spring when the water is the, the main lake is still cold um, brings all of that that life to the surface, and it also brings the big stuff too because of the food chains up there. Tony Bufa, any update on, updates on walleye fest? <clears throat> Uh, not not officially no um, there is a ton of work going on right now behind the scenes and I don't want to I don't want to you know what I what, what, what I will say is that walleye fest is is 100% a go and we have a tournament in either the takeover of the Lions Club Derby or a derby exactly like that on the opening weekend the traditional opening weekend of walleye season may May 6th and 7th, 2023. So that, that much is 100% set in stone. All the rest is the rest of it is going to be window dressing. And, and I want to start talking about that now. Great point, Tony, because um, you were going to see constant updates as we get closer. But the old days, the turnout for that was like 5,000 people. The last couple of years, it's been right about 1,000. Like, we want to go back. And you guys are going to want to do this. I promise you, we're going to, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. This is going to be something I've, I've, I would have always wanted to t- to participate in. And now I'm getting a chance to make it, you know, um, for everybody. And it, it's going to be a blast. I, 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 it's, it is a pure joy right now working on it on a daily basis and brainstorming it and getting it to where we want. But we are doing a two-day walleye derby, May 6th and 7th, no questions asked, um, details to follow. But that is a deal. And the rest of the rest of Walleye Fest is, is absolutely um, going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be fun whether you're a fisherman or not. 
But if you're a fisherman, it's going to be double fun. So you're even cooler, which doesn't surprise. I mean, who's cooler than fishermen? I mean, hunters will say hunters, but. Mm. Let's see. I have the same Garmin 73 SV on my boat that you do, but I don't get the clear pictures that you do, especially on clear view. What are your settings? Oh, Wayne, you're, you're, uh, you and I could talk about this offline and, and we can, um, and I can power mine up in the house and go through my settings with you. My guess is though, it's transducer related. Um, I had a friend of mine help me set up mine, but there are a number of tutorials on the internet that can help you dial in your absolute specific transducer on YouTube. The one guy I can think of off the top of my head on YouTube is Kansas, Kansas angling experience or angling adventures or so, it's got the word Kansas in it. I know that for a fact. Um, but this guy is, he's dialed in, he's Garmin solely. And he has an incredible amount of videos that are very detailed and going through all your settings because you have to figure out what you want to see. It took me, it took me two full seasons because that that Garmin of mine that I have now, and, and I'll always have, I mean, I say I'll always have that. It's taken me two full years to really understand what I wanted it to show me and then how it showed it to me, you know, and how it configured on the screen. Um, the screen that I always take a picture of or, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing fish pictures is I have my, my GPS unit on the left-hand side, full screen, you know, but, but this wide. And then I have up here, I have my traditional sonar set on full water column. And then down below it, I have my, um, my down scan set on uh, zoom zoomed in on the bottom five feet, especially if I'm walleye fishing and especially if I'm jigging, I really only care about the bottom five feet of the water count because that's where they're going to live. Um, but then I started putting the top one, the traditional on full on full um, water column. Because if I started seeing a pattern with fish suspended up at, let's say, I saw it a lot this summer um, out off 130 in that in that 30 to 33 foot of water, that 28 to 33, I was getting fish all day long at 12 feet. And so then I started counting the swim bait down to it if the, if the jigging bite stopped and I'd catch a few fish up here in the water column that I normally wouldn't have known were up there because I used to have both views zoomed into the bottom five feet and then i would check them against each other to see i wasn't getting a false reading or whatever because if both of them showed it at the same exact time you know but i found that i liked it a lot better this year and knowing that i had a backup plan if i kept seeing those high fish and you could have done any number of things or if you're a troller you know um but i mean you could have done other non-swim bait presentations to get to those let's say 12 to 15 in foot fish. Um, you know, you could have thrown a, thrown a deep dive in stick bait or crank bait. You could have um, thrown a lipless. You could have counted down a, a worm and, you know, castable like a hammer spinner rig. They don't have to just be thrown in the weeds. You could certainly do that out there on targeted casted fish, especially if you had um, uh, like forward facing sonar, you could do that very easily, find them, uh, and then figure out how you want to get to them, you know, or or count a jig down as well. A marabou, you know, there's a thousand ways to do that. So that's how I did it, and that's why I did it. Um, you just got to figure out what what you want, and then it's much easier once you know what you want to see and to show you to go find how to get those settings on there. And and I don't have any experience with with Lawrence or Hummingbird. I've only owned a new version Garmin, so. I don't know how the other ones work, but I assume they're the same way. Hmm. 
Where do you get your ice, Travis? Where do you get your ice reports for the area? Just wondering if there's something I can be paying attention to. Well, I just get it like anybody else. I mean, I, I have friends that I would call if I was going to go someplace in, in four or five different areas. Um, I, I just, my time on social media, or I have now, now I have a lot of people that are, that message me or, or whatever and or leave comments on other stuff and tell me more information that I've ever known before. So, um, yeah, but I mean, you can certainly check all of your, all of your local tackle shops and, and whatnot. Let's see what else we got here. <laughs> Mark Webb threw me off with the late with the late start. Yeah, yeah. I want to see you catch a fish on a hair jig you make from your own beard. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm not cutting that much of my beard off to begin with. No way. Try double T fishing on YouTube. Yeah, Scott. Okay, so Scott told me about that. Oh, and also, too, uh, Wayne and Mark. Um, Scott came, Scott Degada right here, who just who just commented. Um, Scott came out fishing with me one time on my boat and, and did the same thing. He's he redid a couple of my um a couple of my settings, and one of the biggest things that he did for me that I liked a lot. And I never would have known it because I wouldn't have known to even do it. He put a cursor that comes out the, the front of the boat. So on, and again, I don't know how the other companies do, but on my Garmin, it gives you the boat icon um, that's you on the map and the GPS side. But then he put this, this it, it comes off, you know, like that, and it's got hash marks on it. And I think mine's in like 100 yard or 50, 50 foot increments. But if you're if, if you're in a small area, especially, and and you've got a bunch of marks, and you're hitting fish in a certain spot within a spot, and you want to come back up to that exact spot, thinking that the, there's something that's holding them right there, like this tells you in real time how close you're getting to it. It's pretty neat. I would have never I would have never known about that had Scott not come out with me. So I'm sure if you guys wanted to ask Scott a Garmin related question. He'd be more than happy to um, to help you out. He was good at it. There's a spreadsheet on settings. Yeah, I mean, some of this is complicated, and and in the new boat, I'm really thinking about putting putting forward facing sonar on. That's a whole nother thing you got to learn. Um, sometimes I like to just not look and just go fish a spot which I still do, especially if it's structure. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do that a lot, and I don't even look. Um, I can't answer that question, Bob. I haven't caught one on, on, a, on an expensive ice rod yet. So I've only ever caught them on, on things I make from broken rods. You know, and like I say, nothing's ever any one thing all the time. You can do stuff with a lot of things, you know. Uh, I'm sure Tiger Woods would have still been a great golfer if he used Arnold Palmer's or Jack Nicholson's clubs that they used back in their day. Um, it would have been funny to – and he probably would have done considerably worse because he didn't – he wouldn't have – I'm sure he could have learned. But I'll bet you those two guys could have stepped up and played better immediately with his equipment than he could have went backwards and tried playing with theirs. That would be that would be something he'd probably like doing something like that too. Uh, that would be something somebody if anybody out there knows Tiger Woods, tell him to try and do that. Tell him to go right now and play a round of golf with with the absolute replicas of like Jack Nicholson's clubs. Nicholas Nicholas Nicholson Nicholson's the actor Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas, your final answer. <laughs> um, how, how do we get talking about golf? Oh yeah, because you go off on tangents. Rumble seat, smart ass comment. That's what <laughs> that's what derailed us right there. Everybody look at Bob and go, whoa. We, um, 
He's still laughing. <laughs> all right, what else we got? I think I'm all the way down. I cracked myself up too. I'm usually the only one laughing at my jokes. Courtney won't laugh. She won't laugh at my jokes now just out of principle. She even in, in and I have some really good ones. I mean, you know, people have called me hilariously funny. Outrageously oh, funny. Oh, people. Oh, people. Oh, people. people. What people? Shh. I have to talk to these people. This is Oh, go ahead. Because, no, not them. <laughs> the people that are lying to you. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, they believe it. Don, lure, color, and sky. Where... I know Mike, meaning Mike Urema from I1 Bates, has talked about color preferences with sky weather, as in sunny, cloudy, et cetera. What's your opinion on sky and lure color? Um, well, to me, to, okay, sky and lure color is quite simply dark day, dark lure, bright day, bright lure. Um, and I'm, I don't definitively change, but in the morning, Donna, you know, um, I start out with something dark. Now that's what that's was the that was the the genesis of homie the clown um i wanted a dark lure to fish early morning because i'm always out there right at first light or even before and and black presents the the, the strongest silhouette from the farthest distance in the color spectrum people would think oh the brighter color would have to be better that's not the case um and that doesn't matter what color water it is either Black has the has the most solid. I, I keep saying silhouette. I think it's silhouette outline, whatever, and and because of its solid nature, you can see it from farther away. Um, that's why they always get so many far off pictures of Bigfoot, because he's black or really dark, and they can see him from a long ways away. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Um. So I go with dark when it's low light or a dark sky. And then I go with bright um, when it's bright, sunny skies um, or really light out, you know, late in the afternoon, especially because the low light of afternoon to me is different than the early morning light. All, everything is still going as it's going down in the afternoon. So uh, like Mike talked about too, from, you know, so if you split the, if you split light and dark at the very core, it would be dark would be gold or copper and light would be brass or not brass. Yeah. Real shiny brass or silver, most likely. Um, so there's, there's dark and light. And then from there, you know, you can you can keep going. Um, homie is black and gold. Okay, so that's dark. Um, Chester Copperpot is perched, so he's good all the time. You know, the disco ball, the silver disco ball. It's 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 a silver plated body with that with that uh, digital prism tape on it. That for me is is midday and on. It's game time for that. Not that you can't catch them on silver in other conditions. I'm just saying that if you ask me about that, that's my opinion. And and dark, dark day, dark lure, light day, light lure means the sky. So I hope that helps. I keep going back and forth to do this. Dan Campus, how you doing, buddy? If you could fish anywhere in the world for any species what would it be? I know I want to chase big eyes off Cape Hatteras. Chase big eye. I thought he meant big walleyes. <laughs> big eye off Cape Hatteras. Wow. And held it up in Alaska. Uh, it's funny. On Instagram a couple days ago, um, you know, you get notifications when somebody likes your channel. And this guy liked my channel and his name, and I forget what his name was. 
it was something something BC. Um, you know, he's got a picture of this steelhead that just this big around and it and its head's in the water right there and its tail sticking out. And I I hit his thing and I looked on his on his Instagram feed and I was just like, oh my God. You know, and he's on he's on the Campbell River in northern British Columbia. And some of you may know I, I the my main character in my book, um, Catching the Drift, his name is Jack, and he winds up at the end of this epic road trip after his retirement. He ends up in the north country of British Columbia up on the NAS system. And the NAS where he was fishing, which gets which gets incredible runs of salmon and steelhead, is like at that point where he was fishing it in the interior of BC was 500 plus miles from the ocean where they all came from. And even the Campbell is a massive river that um, that just rips right down through those mountains of coastal British Columbia. So where would it where would it be for any species? And and I put that British Columbia experience because because that I would say British Columbia would be number one because I would salmon are cool, but I want to go I want to go chase giant steelhead. And um, I'd like to be someplace where I could do it multiple ways and have that full-blown experience of, of Northern British Columbia. Now, when I was writing the book, I spent hundreds of hours, you wouldn't believe, because the, the route and the journey my, my character takes, the physical route from east to west, like I mapped out the whole thing. And so I've looked at hundreds of hours of, of Google map pictures and stuff from Northern British Columbia. And I would love to go there and catch a giant steelhead. Um, and, and not just a giant, but just have that experience of, of a good steelhead trip up there in the wilds of British Columbia. Number two, in a very, very, very close second, would be Alaska. Um, my buddy Mo has been in Alaska for, God, 20 plus years, 25 years now, I think. And it would be a dream of mine for, for me to go, and he's still doing it. Um, but I would love like for him and I to do an outback trip, a fly-in um, into one of those outback camps up there in Alaska. That would be pretty cool, you know. And and even with the bugs and the in the sleeping in a tent and all that stuff, that would be cool to fish places where very few people have ever done it before. And and it's Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. I would love to go to Alaska. Um, I'd like to go to Alaska yearly, honestly. Um, we should probably start organizing an adult field trip. The Awakening Angler adult field trip goes to Alaska. How freaking cool would that be? How cool would that be? Do they have a spa there? Yes, <laughs> depending on where you go. Okay. You could, you know, something like that. So so my wife giggles over here in the corner and says, do they have a spa there? I know full well I can't take her out to the bush. I know that. And most of us know that. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't plan something where there were split accommodations or some places, some of the some of the really nice lodges offer daily flyouts, which would be pretty cool too. Um, but there's a part of you that wouldn't mind living in the bush with the grizzlies for three, four days and really having that experience. But that doesn't mean you couldn't bring your significant others with you and then still do stuff at a lodge setting at the same time and not for nothing but you know like raise your hand i have kicked around this idea before and this one just kind of slipped out like what if we organized adult field trips to go fishing in different places um and did groups a couple times a year like would anybody be interested in doing something like that um you know if i said to you here's a flat price for everything if you want to go for this long to this place um, I'd be real curious to know if anybody, anybody would be interested in that. Giovanni, look at this guy. I love this guy's name, Giovanni. Every time, and and do you go by your full name? Like nobody calls me Matthew. Um, everybody calls me Matt. Is there a short version for Giovanni? Uh, Giovanni or Tenzi? That that uh, 
I love that name. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Not as much as Misty Windy Rain. That one's also cool. What is what's the show they do? Um, they're in Alaska, or they come into the states, and they do it's, um, like people that live off the grid. They help people. Homestead oh, stuff. Yeah, rescue. It's, it's homestead, homestead rescue. rescue. Yeah. It's it's Marty Rainey, his son Matt Rainey, and his daughter's name is Misty. Her middle name is Windy, and her last name is Rainey. That to me is the that to me those two parents that was clever and funny, and I'm sure she hates it. I don't know. Probably everybody in their whole life was like Misty Windy Rainey, but I think it's funny, and I and I. So hold on, I started to read Giamatti's. <laughs> Jesus God. <sighs> Do you think the steelhead are up in the tribs around the Salmon River? No. Uh, well, this year maybe because there's been water. Um, Orwell was blown out. Uh, no, I shouldn't say blown out. Last week. Um, it, um, boy. Um, it's cold. I mean, they could – I guess they could be tricked into thinking that it was spring, that it was March. You know, and that and that that smell was telling them it was time. So I shouldn't say no. I wouldn't think there's a lot of them, but there could very well be. There could absolutely be. Um, that's a great question. Um, LOL Bigfoot. He really believes Bigfoot exists. And then you're laughing at me too. Listen, I, I, I who's to say that he doesn't exist? You know. I mean, just because he's never been identified, captured, or killed <laughs> ever doesn't mean that it's not possible. Right? All right. He looks like he's related. <laughs> well, Bob's off speed dial. <laughs> Don Birdie, first one, my buddy. I'm in for an Alaskan road trip. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dan Campus, he's in. Mark Webb, yes, 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 yes. Geo, okay. Geo, I got you, buddy. My daughter's name, one of my daughter's names is Gianna. Um, and we call her Gigi. She's not Italian. You are. She's, well, she's part Italian on her mother's side. Uh, group trip. Hmm. That's that's an immediate more response than I expected. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. I'm freaking in too, Don. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's funny. So I have, I have Manila folders. That's how I'm trying to keep things in line. And I had a piece of paper written down here somewhere. Tammy wants to know what you use for perch. What are those little fish called? Oh, the minnows, the fatheads. Yeah, I like Soco perch eyes too. Um, that was the first time I'd ever seen anybody when when I saw saw Nick's stuff. Um, it was the first time I'd ever seen anybody make a plastic perch eye with the with the reflective piece inside, which is which is pretty cool. All right, so here's here's the sheet of paper, and I'm I'm assuming this goes on backwards. Uh, can you read that? Well, there's a delay, but I'm sure I, I'll have to wait. So I wrote this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I wrote this a couple weeks ago, and it's and it's a trip list. Like I was just saying about you know, would anybody in, be interested in doing group trips? Uh, and so my first thought was four trips per year: uh, winter, spring, summer, fall. So winter, you could have you could have your choice between uh, ice fishing on some of the you know, world famous bodies of water out in the Midwest, you know, Devil's Lake, Cascade, you know, Rainy, all the stuff. And those guys, it's, they've been fishing out there since, since November. Um, so you could do something like that, a, a, a really distant, you know, 
bucket list body of water ice fishing trip. You can go to the warm weather too. Um, you can go down whether in the states or out. You can go down into the Keys, you know, from from Myrtle Beach south or from Charleston south along the coast or down into. I've always wanted to go to Venice, um, Louisiana, and 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 fish down there. They, they it's supposed to be some of the best fishing in the Gulf. Um, and I got a good friend of mine, uh, Pete Robbins, who who does trips down to El Salto in Mexico with the full blown you just show up kind of experience and there's guides and boats and, and everything right there. Um, you know, spring, I've always wanted to do those big um, runs of Midwestern walleyes, um, the Detroit and, and some of those Saginaw and some of those other rivers and, and see that standing shoulder to shoulder um, with people, combat fish and walleyes. I've always wanted to, to do that. Or, and uh, so there's that. You could you could spring steelhead fish any number of places um, throughout the Great Lakes, the Northwest, all the way up into well, maybe not Alaska, but um, and spring bass down in the deep south. Like you know, bucket list for me would be go down. A good friend of mine who's a who's a touring pro down in Texas, um, Clark Ream, he guides down on Lake Fork and a couple of those big lakes in southern Texas, and and of course. They're spawned down there when they're fishing all those big pre-spawners. You know, they're they're already spawned out in, in April. So you could go down there in March and and have a chance at a 10-pound largemouth in the States, you know. So something like that would be cool. Summer. Courtney and I did a keys. the keys, not in the summer, in the winter. Go to the keys. Oh, okay. Yeah. So summer, the first thing I wrote down now, Courtney and I did a drive-in trip to northwestern Ontario. Um four years ago three years ago four years ago and it was awesome i'd like to do a fly-in to a to a canadian lodge where it's just you on that lake and and your group and um you know and that's everything walleye brook trout smallmouth all of it but i'd love to do one of those um and then and then salmon you know salmon you could go back you could do alaska in the early fall um you know fall walleye and trout fishing here um, you know, wherever, just with some ideas, you know, but you, you would be much more specific, you know, fall too. I'd like to do, I de- I've never fished Lake Erie and I have, I have friends now that, that have invited me for this coming year, but, um, it'd be cool to do something like that with, with a bunch of people, I think, um, especially a bunch of our people. I think that would be cool as well. All right. It's 1256. That means uh, that means we got to go, and you guys got to go. Back to work, hanging out the rest of the day. Do something good for yourself. Have fun. The weekend's here. Um, it's gnarly outside in spots, so be careful driving home. And I'll see everybody tomorrow morning somewhere. I'll try to do it more in the in the morning like normal. So, from Courtney and I, have a great lunch. Thanks for joining us. Had a ton of people, a lot of great comments. We're doing this with my left hand. <laughs> Love you guys. Keep your tip up. Do you know the way to 